Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I thought we'd um, do a little bit more work on the um, Apricot Zen. Uh, what I've done, uh, as you remember from the last video, we got to the point where we had it powered up and we could get up to um, a boot screen but obviously we come up with an error because the CMOS battery is flat. Uh, we tried booting a floppy disk off it but we couldn't actually get um, a disk to boot from it. Uh, what I've done I've got a few different flavours of um, DOS here. I've got um, a DOS 6.2 boot disk, I've got a DOS 5 boot disk, I've got a DOS 4 boot disk and um, that's actually the boot disk that you can make from uh, Windows XP. Um, and I've tested all them um, using the uh, Bridge PC here and I know all those versions of DOS will boot um, that Bridge PC there. As well as that we don't know whether the floppy drive in this works. I've fished out two um, old floppy disks. Um, I mean these haven't been serviced but um, I fished these out and I, te I did test them. I connected them up to this um, and went through them. Um, both will um, allow any of them disks I've got there to actually boot. So uh, we know we've got two good floppy drives there and we know we've got a, um, a few different version of DOS that definitely do boot using these floppy disks. So that's something we can rule out basically. I've also got a um, just a spare floppy disk connector which might make life a little bit easier because the one on there is um, keyed. Um, I think it'll fit that drive or actually it will fit the other drive alright because I modified it but um, that might make life easier as well. I'll keep that to one side. Um, someone did comment to me um, after I made the first video that they were saying because the CMOS battery is flat so a lot of the computers um, and it's right this um, would default to say a 1.2 meg um, floppy drive as the um, default drive and obviously uh, this is a 1.44 meg drive the thing is I don't know I don't think uh, that will be the case in um, this situation because these apricots were they weren't really intended to run uh, per se with a uh, five and a quarter inch disk drive. I believe you could get like a card and uh, run one externally, but uh, these, I mean, it was one of the things with Apricot. I believe Apricot, uh, like the XI range, were the first computer available in the UK that actually used three and a half inch floppy, floppy disks because that would have predated the Mac by um, a year because the, I think the XI came out in 83. Um, the Mac 84 so yeah um, Apricot have always had a thing with uh, three and a half inch um, floppy disks um, they only had the first the 286 version of this when it first came out they actually go for a 1.2 meg uh, five and a quarter inch and they very quickly dropped it and uh, went back to a three and a half inch so like I said I don't think that's probably going to be the issue in any case, even if it was, if um, my memory serves me correctly, and I will have to double check this, but I'm pretty sure this is right. Even if the drive is set as a 1.2 meg drive, providing the disk say 720k disk rather than 1.44 meg disk, it should actually still boot. I mean, it, the drive parameters are set wrong, but um, I remember that from the past. I'm sure that works. That even, like I say, even though it's a um, a 1.44 meg drive and it's being set as a 1.2 meg drive it obviously won't boot a 1.44 meg disc but a double density um, three and a half inch disc um, it, I'm pretty certain that will still boot in fact we might be able to try that using the um, bridge PC just to see if it makes sure that my memory hasn't um, left me anyway uh, first things first I have already tried all those discs on that drive and uh, we get the same as we had last time so um, I definitely think that that drive there is most likely faulty I even tried um, I unhooked the power um, from the hard drive as we know the hard drive isn't spinning um, I was wondering whether because that's not spinning it's um, pulling that is putting too much of a load on either the 5 volt or the 12 volt line and that was actually affecting the disk drive so I actually disconnected the um, hard disk uh, that didn't make any difference at all either 
So what I think we're going to do, we'll pull out the um, drive assembly bay completely, we'll just um, get that out of the picture. And we'll see if we can boot uh, using one of these non-good floppy drives and one of these discs and see if we can get any further that way. And then obviously we can look at seeing what we can do with the um, actual floppy drive. Get that out of the way. We'll leave it plugged in and switched off just for um, static um, static reasons. I do have my ESD wrist strap um, around here if we um, get into it a bit further later on in this video. But that all depends on what we find um, when we try this. Let's get that power connector out of the way. And we'll disconnect. Where's that uh, set of pliers? We'll disconnect the, uh, the ribbon cable off the back of the um, floppy drive. Like that. It's a pity we can't pop that speaker off um, so I could li leave the speaker there for the beep, but that's not exactly necessary. We'll um, pull the hard, drive, the hard drive connectors off, nice and gentle. There we go, that's one. And we're going to have to have a look at that hard drive, see if we can um, breathe any life into it. Oh, we need to disconnect that as well. And disconnect that. We should be able to run it without them lights connected. That shouldn't make a major issue. We can just get that out of harm's way for now. We might have a look around for a speaker we can plug into there, but we don't need that for the moment. Right, let's take one of these. It's a nice old um, Sony one. I think that's one that came in a bag that came from um, Mildred, actually. Right, the, the connector there isn't actually quite right, but you can just about get it on. The tab on this uh, ribbon cable is actually on the underneath. Even though I'm pretty sure that that's the right way round um, with the red stripe to the power connector. If mean, we've got it wrong, all that happens is the drive light will stay on constantly and we'll swap it back round. But I think that's right. Let's get that power on there. Okay. So we've got the um, 1.44 meg floppy there connected up. So we've taken the hard drive out completely. The only thing that's being powered by the PSU now is this floppy drive and the motherboard. We'll take um, we'll take this LNX. In fact, we'll take that DOS 5 one, being that it's... I I'm literally just made that um, when I was messing about with the, the bridge PC before. Right, so that's in there. Let's switch on and let's see what happens. Well, that doesn't look good. I'm going to see this, but we've got artifacts on the screen this time. Oh, I don't think we had that last. Key oh, keyboard failure. Yeah, we've got a keyboard failure because um, I've not got the keyboard plugged in. Let's try that again. Switch off. And connect the keyboard up. And the drive did at least seek, but I mean it was seeking last time as well. And I do think we've got some battery leakage in this thing. Just the way I've got the light hitting it now, I can see it looks very, very greasy and a bit nasty around that battery. So, then again, drive controller and everything like that, everything we're working on should be on this side of the board. And this looks pretty damn clean, to be honest, apart from a bit of fluff. Let's uh, switch on again. Well, it's not come up with all that artifacts this time. Let's see if we get any um, Strike F1. No boot device available, again. Let's just... Uh, So you can, it's spinning the disc up, um, but it's not trying to seek it or anything. 
so when you press it, it is spinning the disc. Let's just try swapping the disc for a different disc. And like I said, I've definitely confirmed that this this disc drive definitely works. Well, just as a last thing, because it's the only thing I haven't tried yet. I'm just going to try swapping this uh, drive just in case. In fact, that won't work. Because this uses a straight through cable. Hmm. Yes, this uses a straight through cable. So it doesn't have the uh, little twist in it that uh, normal um, PC cables have. I'm presuming that's right, that's probably something um, apricot specific. But yeah, hmm. I have one, got one with a twist here, just in case someone's put their own cable in at their own, you know, sometime in the past. Can't see that being the case, but I don't think it'll cause any issues trying one with a um, twist in it, so let's just see. No. You can see it. I mean, it did seek then, but we've got Discate Drive Zero seek failure. Interestingly, it can actually um, still spin the. You know, it's exactly the same. That unfortunately isn't the problem. So we may have, unfortunately, we may have an issue with the um, floppy controller on this board. Which could be a bit of a death knell for the board. I mean, I suppose what I could do is I could try connecting up a um, five and a quarter inch um, floppy drive to it. I wonder if that would be a, as a final test, just to make sure, just to rule everything else out. Like I said, just in case it has defaulted to like a 1.2 meg drive and it can't, I'm, you're remembering it wrong and it can't um, be able to recognise a 720k disc. Um, I wonder if I should dig out a, um, even a 360 would do, wouldn't it? If I dug out a 360k floppy and put a 360k disc in it. Uh, we could try that. That in fact, in fact, the one in my bridge PC here is a uh, 1.2 meg. Uh, we could pull that out of the bridge PC and try that, just as a final uh, thing. But I think there's probably something wrong on board, which is a bit of a some crossed around um, a couple of ICs there actually. I'll just get a cotton bud because I mean again that's the that's going to be the disc controller there that uh, WDC part I mean that'd be easy enough to change out it's surface mount but it's nothing um, nothing spectacular that'd be easy enough to change out it could even be perhaps one of these electrolytics we've got around here but there's no real signs of them leaking but and that's going to be decoupling conceivably if one of these decoupling capacitors is um, out that could possibly do it in fact let's just make sure the jumpers are set right yeah floppy here because you can disable the floppy so um, We're looking at SW9, which is the big set of switches there. Um, 
basically if you look on the board, oh on the, you can't see if you're looking at the screen basically on here um, it shows us the sw switch pack down here um, which is SW9 and um, switch 3 is um, floppy and um, off equals disabled, on equals enabled so let's just check one which is disabled which is password two is on which is um, serial com one three is on which is the floppy four is on which is the hard disk let's just try switching the hard disk off just in case that's causing some um, problems in fact let's just make sure everything else is um, as it should be parallel port and VJ are on Ethernet, which this one hasn't got um, um, built in, is off. So that switch box set right. See, all I've done is disable um, the RLL um, controller on board, I think. I hope that's how that works. Um, let's find the original cable. What have I done with the original cable? There it is. So I don't expect this to make a difference, but you never know. It goes in there like that. It goes in there like that. We've got a floppy in there. Let's just switch on. It's going to be exactly the same. I'll just hit F1 just to see. Yeah, no boot device available. It's exactly the same. Right, I'm just going to, just like I said, just to um, complete it. I don't honestly think it's going to make any, in fact, I'm, and I'm going to need a straight through. Oh, I think I've got one of them. Um, I'll need a cable which is. Um, fact I know what I could possibly do um, where is the hard disk I wonder if I can actually use the cable off the hard disk yeah that should actually work I'm gonna go and sort out a uh, one point uh, five and a quarter inch floppy drive and we'll just try connecting up a five and a quarter inch um, floppy drive like I said I don't honestly believe that's going to make a difference um, but it's worth a um, it's worth a quick try anyway um, we'll do that and then we're going to have a better investigation of that battery at the back because it does look like it has leaked and done a little bit of damage so um, we're going to have to really investigate that before we go uh, any further so um, back in a sec Okay, right now, I have pinched the um, five and a quarter inch out of my um, four eight six. I don't honestly think this is going to make any difference at all, but um, I suppose we can work. It's worth a try. So basically, what we're going to do is um, three sixty k um, floppy. So we'll try and. Um, Got a couple of different versions of DOS here, uh, DOS 3. I think most of them are different versions of DOS 3. I might have DOS 4 or something here as well. Yeah, but DOS 4. But they're all 360k um, double density disks. So we'll see if that's going to make any difference at all. At all. Because I don't honestly think it is. But it's worth um, it's worth a try. Okay, plug the power from the um, hard disk in. First thing we'll do is just power it up and see if it, at least if it seeks the um, seeks the head. So we'll switch on. The drive's not like it's not on or anything. There we go. We've got a drive seek. A valid configuration. F1 to continue. Let's take one of these copies of DOS. Um, just a minute. Which one would be the best? DOS 
DOS, DOS Utils. There we go. This one should work. I'll put that in the drive. And we'll press F1. Because I don't think this is going to make any difference, but. Now, there we go. Just get read failure. No boot device available. I mean, again, it's running the. Um, it's spinning the motor. We'll just try. Uh, we'll, just in case, I'll stick a different um, version of DOS. There we go. We yep, have some more here. Just in case that disc's bad. I don't think it is. In fact, that one might be. I, mean, I won't use that disc. That looks absolutely fine. Let's have a quick look through here. Oh, we've got DOS 4 here. There we go. Try DOS 4. Yeah, that looks good. Just get read failure. No boot device available. So let's just try doing a quick. But I do not think that. Um, that is the problem. I think there may be something actually wrong with the. Um, disc controller or some. Or that side of it anyway. I don't know if it's necessarily the disc controller. But it does look like we've definitely got um, another fault. The switch off there. So it's not just a faulty disc drive. And I don't think it's the fact that the uh, drive, like I said, it's defaulted to um, a different drive standard because we've tried everything that should work in that respect, and it's not even attempt. It's not even as though it's trying to um, seek the disc or anything. It's just not. It'll say it'll spin the disc. It'll do that initial seek, but that's it. You know, when you um, press the F1, it's not even attempting to step the head up the disc or anything. Right, what we're going to do though is um, we need to inspect that damage on this board because like I said it's, um, I think it's actually a little bit worse than I um, initially anticipated it was. We'll get the, uh, we'll get everything disconnected and I think we're actually going to pull the, um, pull the main board out and we can take a proper look at it. Now where is, oh there it is, there is my anti-static strap, I'll just get myself grounded out. Um, anti-static uh, precautions on so I don't mind messing with this with the power disconnected now. Um, first things first, let's see what we're going to need to do to get this, um, we're going to have to take the, I think we may have to take the power supply out first actually. Let's see how that is connected there. Right, let's get a screwdriver. working blind on this um, computer a little bit being like I said there's very very little about these um, on YouTube or uh, really online there's you know like various museum posts but nothing that technical yeah that battery is looking a bit more manky than I um, initially thought it did and you will get get everything we need to get out, out of the way so we can get down to that board hmm. yeah we can take the riser out now I think that 
is really stuck in there. There we go. Yeah, we do have. There's definitely some um, some battery leakage. I've got some green corrosion on the um, ISA slot on the board there, and if, I don't know if we can make this out on the camera, but we do have some green deposits along the actual edge connector there. Same on the same on the back there. We'll put that out of the way for now. It's actually a little bit worse in the connector down there. It's not horrendous. It certainly will clean up, but. Yeah, that battery's been leaking a lot more than I in initially thought it had been. Right, let's see about getting getting the rest of this out. There's a screw there, but I don't... Ah, it's, the plastic's degraded around it because it just pulled straight out. What I'd like to try and do is get the power supply and the metal work associated... In fact, I think I need to take them off. Oops, that one's stiff. Come back to that one. That one's turning. That one's turning, that one's missing. There's one there that's being a bit stiff, but let's get let's get these out. And put all the screws together and then we don't lose anything. Stiff, weren't it? Right, that's all them out. Oh, I've still got that one out, didn't, it wouldn't turn. Let's try it again. Nope, that's not wanting to go. Let's a little bit more brutal on it. There we go. Alright, that's out. Now just put another screw around the front here. That's out. Now is that all we need to get the... That's free. That's free. Oh, and there's a screw down there holding it that I haven't spotted. Take him out. And I think this framework should come free. Let's disconnect the. Uh... There we go. There we go. Right. So that's the um, the power supply and its associated bracketry out of harm's way. And put them out of there down there for now. Right, you can see how how mankified the board actually is. Um, now I've got it up like this, I can actually see quite a lot more um, more possible leakage. There seems to be some crust all the way around here. Um, the battery, like I said, has actually leaked a lot more than I thought it had. It's uh, fairly nasty around there. Around up here where the drive controller and all that is, that looks absolutely fine. Um, again, around the ROMs, I'm guessing that's the keyboard controller there. Um, that's obviously the floppy drive controller there. There's plenty of things we can actually check um, around there. It shouldn't be too much of a problem. I'm more confident of getting this system working than that um, Oveta that I was trying to get going. I mean, I have a feeling that that would be underwater at some point, um, judging by the corrosion in the case. And I think it had actually done damage inside the multi-layer board. Anyway, we'll get this out of the rest of the case and um, onto the workbench. And we can... Oops. Try not to throw the screws all over the floor. That was amazing I actually found that then. Um, right, let's carry on. There's quite a lot of screws holding this in place. And get to have a look what um, processor this is. I think it should be um, a 386 SX16. And I'm wondering actually, possibly, what I could upgrade that to. I 
think on the um, thing it says an SX20 or possibly a DX20 could go in. Um, once I've got this out of the board I'll get the actual camera down onto the um, board a bit more and you can actually we'll go over the board and you can have a bit of a better look at it. You can see we can date it as well. I think it's around 88, 89 another screw there I think that should be it, let's try now because it have to come out this way there seems to be something holding it but I can't see what I mean on that side you've got the keyboard connector there so I guess it comes out this way manipulate the case. There we go, yeah you have to slightly bend the case. I don't like that, especially when the plastic's this old. Where am I? Ah, and I'm missing a screw. That doesn't help. I hid one behind that hide disk connector. Right, there we go. Now we should be able to get... There we are, that's better. We'll get the case out of the way that's going to need a damn good clean it's pretty uh, pretty filthy I've seen a lot worse actually but it is still pretty filthy right that's out of one out of the way and let's uh, we'll get you in if we can you can have a bit of a better look at this motherboard right, let's zoom you down right now what I'll do is I'll get you to where, uh, yeah, can we see the um, battery here now, let me see if I can zoom you right in, there we go, as we can see that battery is looking a bit more manky than I uh, first actually thought it did, it's, it's pretty nasty around there, uh, there's green corrosion on this uh, little um, crystal there uh, the little strap that goes across it's all corroded there's um, green corrosion on these pins which I think are probably voltage going up to the ISA um, the ISA socket um, slots there yeah, in fact that's probably what they are very much like it's done on that um, Oavetti actually if you look very very similar, similar um, design Uh, yeah, it's not as good as I actually originally thought it was. That's a bit of a shame, really. The rest of the board doesn't look too bad. Like I said, there's a couple of little spots that look um, pretty filthy, but uh, around the battery there is by far the worst. Um, so we'll look on the other side of the board. Yeah, uh, that's actually a lot worse than I thought. I um, don't know if you can make this out. Get my finger, Let's see if I can get my finger in shot. Uh, there we go. We can see there's um, considerable uh, corrosion damage around here. A lot of green, a um, lot of green traces. So unfortunately, the battery leakage has um, has done a lot more damage than I um, originally thought it would have. Things I'm under, I can't understand why damage around here would cause a boot problem. Um, one of the problems I was thinking actually with um, with the boot, it was going through my mind. Uh, it wouldn't matter if um, I'm going to install that SCSI card. Like I say, it's got its own boot ROM and everything. Uh, it wouldn't be it'd be a hack way of getting the computer working, but there's a chance we could get the uh, computer at least booting that way. Uh, that will give us um, an opportunity to actually get into the um, setup program as well because I could use uh, the bridge computer uh, that's equipped with a SCSI card uh, to make a hard drive up with all the um, apricot uh, setup stuff that I can find uh, we could get that to boot and then get, into, get up into the setup that way uh, that would not I don't think sort our floppy drive um, problem out but 
I mean, if I did that and I put a network card in the computer, I mean, that's another way of getting software on there. I mean, floppy is a bit redundant now, really. It, I just would really like to have a working boot in um, floppy drive. But yeah, so we've got some serious corrosion we're going to have to address around there. And... Where is a lot of that brown stuff is all around here? I think it's literally run through vias. We're going to have quite a clean up job. Um, we're going to have quite a clean up job here, unfortunately. It's, it's a lot more um, messy than I initially thought it would be. Let's. I've got some IPA around here. I should have some IPA around here. Yes, I have. I've got some cotton buds. So we'll I'll zoom you out a little bit so you've got a little bit better uh, better view of what we're looking at. Let's get you down onto this area here basically. Um, and we'll do a bit of a clean up. At least so we can see what we're working with. Leakage is quite, yeah. yeah. This is a lot worse than I was expecting. This is a bit of a bummer. Let's get the area roughly cleaned up anyway, and then uh, I'm only going to clean this area. I'm not going to bother with cleaning the rest of the board yet. I just want to see how bad the damage around here is. Dear me, and the fluff. Let's see if we can pick some of this fluff out of the way. The problem is with the way the battery's leaked, it, the fluff's actually soaked a lot of the um, the liquid up. It's like a, it, it's like greasy. The um, the fluff. It's just not like normal. Um, well, fluff. Yeah, there's a diode here and it's it's almost completely lost its legs. They've gone totally green. Maybe we can get that battery off. We'll probably have to. I don't want to risk actually cutting it off because I can't really see. See, if I could see in, I'd be able to just cut the legs and we'd be able to um, walk that off the board. But I I think we'll probably have to take it off with us. Let's just try here now. now. I think what we'll have to do is we'll have to heat the soldering iron up um, and get that get that battery off the board before we do um, anything else actually. So um, I'll just get the soldering iron set up and we'll just whip that battery off the board and then we'll just finish off just cleaning around that area so we can actually see what we're um, what we're going to have to work with. Okay, well I've got my um, I've got my iron heated up. We've got um, some fresh solder. I've got the solder sucker, so we're going to see if we can get that. Um, we'll get that battery off the board. Let's flip it over. And you can, see, like I say, you can see just how corroded this is around here. But basically, we've got a point there, a point there, and a point there. Now these two don't look like they've been as affected by um, corrosion than that one up there. I think that's the positive and they are the negative. Um, could be the other way around. What we'll try and do first is we'll add some fresh we'll add some fresh solder. We'll start with this one. We'll just try and add some fresh solder to it. With this amount of corrosion even this is quite tricky. It really does not want to take solder. These ones aren't too bad. That took solder okay. And that one did. Let's just go back onto that and just try and reheat that. Okay, let's try and see if we can remove it using the uh, desoldering pump. And get it nice and warm. And actually we didn't do too badly there, we got most of that out in that one. Let's try again on this one. And again, we didn't do too badly there, there's a little bit of um, dross still around there, but 
We've actually got most of the solder out in them too. Let's try this one. No, that one not as well. There's a lot more corrosion around that point. We're going to actually add some new fresh fresh solder to help dilute that really crusty damaged um, crystalline solder. Then we'll have another go at um, sucking that out. And we did get a lot more out that time. Let's try that one more time. Right, let's just get the crud out of the bottom end of my uh, piece of solder pump. And we'll go in for another go. Right, I think that's probably the best we're going to achieve with that. Let's try seeing if we can just rock it out. There we go, nice and easy. So we've basically got that side of the battery free. So it's just held by those two points there. And like I said, we've got most of the solder out on that first um, suck. Let's just see if we can just warm it up and just draw the rest of that out. Just one point holding that battery now. Just go in there, heat it up, and we can see we can pop the battery nearly. That's out. That's it, that's the battery removed. And there, let me just put this iron so I don't burn myself. There we go. And there's the little bugger in question. So it's a Vata, um, 3.6 volt, I presume it's probably original to the um, computer, can't see a date on it but um, I'm guessing it's the original and it is quite leaky, well you can see if you look at it side on like that you can see how much it's blown out like that, but that appears to be what's done the, um, done the damage on this one, right now we've got that out let's have a little bit of a clean round on this side and then we'll flip it over and we'll um, finish off cleaning up the other side and see exactly how bad um, or not it is. This is what's concerning me up here uh, where the corrosions leak through a load of vias. Um, I'm not sure how many layer board this is. It's certainly going to be more than two layer. Probably four. And if it's damaged the um, internal layers around here, we may never ever get the computer fully working. And that's the problem with battery leakage in these old systems. It's not so bad on some of the much earlier systems where you've only got a two layer board and you can get to both sides and do repairs. Uh, the later stuff where you've got multi layer boards, if you have severe battery corrosion, and it gets through vias uh, between the layers. That's it. It's pretty much game over for the board. That's cleaned up a fair old bit. But I, what I will have to do is uh, obviously do a lot of continuity checks in this area, and just make sure that these traces are actually still in um, in good condition. And then obviously, like I said the same thing for the vias. We'll have to go through all the vias and um, make sure there's still con connectivity there. And that's just the that's just the crud off the bottom of the board. But we can really see. I'll get you zoomed down so you can have a really good look. Oops, wrong way. Right in. And like I said, that's where this is basically where the battery has been um, taken off from. Um, you can see the amount of corrosion and damage around here. Let me just turn the board so you can um, possibly see this. Let me see if we can get in there. Can you see this? Um, oops, where are we? There we go. We can look at that um, diode, it's either a diode or it's a ferret bead on, no it's a diode isn't it? Uh, look at the state of the legs on it, look at the state of the legs on the back of the Molex connector there. So there's a lot 
um, and I do mean a lot of corrosion damage unfortunately in this um, in this area here again there's a paradise chip there now that's going I said um, oh, sorry you can't see where we're um, looking at here can you let me get you in there there we go that's better um, there's a paradise chip here and I did say props were chips and tech for the VGA but being that paradise were a, um, a VGA um, card manufacturer or at least a chip VGA chipset manufacturer I'm guessing it's got a um, paradise uh, VGA on it and that obviously still works um, so it can't be too terminal in that respect round here but it's pretty bad see one of the problems is if it's prevent, going to prevent the um, ISA bus from working if say it's killed part of the ISA bus we aren't going to be able to put a SCSI card in it and um, get it to boot that way and the corrosion is pretty terrible around here I don't know how it's also it could have affected these um, capacitors as well so the corrosion is pretty at least it's localized to this area it's not as though the entire board is um, totally corroded off it is just um, it is just seemingly this area that's really um, really taking a hit it doesn't help that this fluff is basically now stuck to uh, stuck to everything because it's a, a mixture of fluff and um, leakage from the battery in like one um, one package I'm going to, is that a diode or is it a ferret bead it could just be a ferret bead actually but either way the uh, legs on it are pretty shot there's a little surface mount bit of um, glue logic there I can't actually make out what it is well, that seems to have taken the fair brunt of the um, battery leakage as is this um, chips and tech chip here this entire side of it down there and down there look pretty bad and it's actually got down under the side of the chip though so it is cleaning I think it's one of them horrible things where I'd have to I may have to take off um, a, a number of the ICs in this area and I really hate working on surface mount stuff but I don't think there's going to be any other option really to get this board um, to get this board working again and I really would like to get this one working so it's a computer that I've uh, I've got an interest in and bring back um, quite fond memories of when I was at um, secondary school. Yeah, I've got other systems which will run the same software, but it's, it's just the nostalgia of it, really. But yeah, it's it's not going to be as easy a uh, restore as I um, initially as I initially thought it was. Apologies about that. I just hit the um, off button by mistake. As I was saying, like I say, it's not going to be as an easy a um, restoration as I initially thought with this computer, unfortunately. Um, bit of a shame, but then again, you know, it's a challenge, isn't it? Can we see if we can actually um, get it working? At least it's got more life in it than that um, Oveti did. And so that Oveti, there's pretty much nothing running on it. It's, it's 
had it, it's completely gone. As for at least we're getting up to um, a boot screen with this, like I said, it which means that the processor's running, the RAM's running, everything like that's working. Uh, I'm just got this horrible, horrible feeling that the reason that the disc control is not working properly is possibly something to do with you know one of these um, ICs that's um, had a battery leakage on it. Uh, I can't think of any other real explanation. I think we've ruled everything out else out um, regarding floppy drives um, stopping it from working. Um, so really, the only thing we've got left is um, corrosion damage. In fact, it's not just limited to this area. I've just noticed here now, um, if you look in this area, here, which is nowhere near where the battery leaked, and there's, plenty, there's, there's good areas in between, um, there's loads of corrosion around, was it, IC74 here, um, the IC55 which is not populated, but the socket around there has got, um, let's get another cotton bud, has got loads and loads of um, corrosion around it. I'm wondering, this have a card in it at some point which was removed before I, um, I got the computer. That possibly also had either very leaky capacitors on it or um, a battery which leaked and dripped down. Because I so said there's a lot of corrosion around here, which is nowhere near where the um, where the battery was, and there's no corrosion, much corrosion here, in this area. So how did you get leakage from there to jump over to there when there's not really a lot of leakage around here? So I'm I'm wondering whether, like I said, there was a card in at some point that perhaps had a battery backup on it or it had some electrolytics that uh, were very prone to leaking and that's actually literally dripped down onto this part of the board and caused an additional um, issue around here. All I can really do is... Um, in fact, have we got... A Oh no, it's connected. I, th I, I thought they were actually a uh, one of the bodge wires. There's a lot of bodge wires on the board as well, factory bodge wires. Um, I actually thought one would come loose there, but no it isn't. It is connected. So what I'm going to do... But what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this for now. Um, I'm probably going to spend an hour or two... Um, Next time I've got a spare five minutes, actually really cleaning this board up. Like I said, it needs more time than I can really spend just videoing it um, to really clean the board, get all the um, this old electrolyte and everything like that off it, and then we'll we'll come back to it at that point, and um, we'll see. We'll do some continuity checks on it. Um, we'll see what we can find. We'll see if there's any repairs we need to do, and then we'll um, get back into it. I'll see what I can do about digging out the um, service information for this thing as well. I think I did actually track down the um, full service data for this with uh, block diagrams, circuit di schematic diagrams, uh, fault finding, everything in it. Um, it's on one of my hard drives. So what I'll have to do is dig that out. I'll um, stick it on the um, computer in front of me or I'll, if it's not too big I'll print it out and I can work from that and we can um, slowly go through this thing. It's, because it's not completely dead, I'm not giving up hope with it, but um, unfortunately, unfortunately, there is a lot more damage from that leaking battery than um, I really did expect to find. Listen, when I first looked in this, I thought, oh, we've actually got one where the batteries have not really leaked. Um, <laughs> how wrong was I? Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Um, We'll get back to this computer in um, a very short order and um, do a little bit more on it. But I um, hope you enjoyed this little update on the project. So thanks for watching and goodbye.